are this year, 2022, celebrating 100 years of Paulist ministry here in the Eternal City. It is a great honor and a privilege for me to minister and to step into the footsteps of generations of Paulists, the work they have done here, the paths they have uh, opened. The ministry that they have done still is a magnet to many residents, visitors, pilgrims. I remember even visiting in 1991. Um, uh, that was the very first time I came and saw the ministry. I'm very grateful for all those who have served here in Rome and all the people who have supported this ministry, both Americans and other English-speaking people. A lot of our parishioners are American, but a lot are also from the Philippines, and from Japan. I've been attending St. Patrick's and before that San Camilo de Lelis and before that Santa Susana since probably 2011. My involvement with the parish began slowly, coming every once in a while. And then as I became more regular and coming every Sunday, I was asked by Father Greg to be on the parish council. I feel like I've known the Paulists my whole life. I went to Catholic school almost 20 years uh, before I entered the professional world and uh, majored in religious studies at university. And so the Paulists, through Paulist Press, were always known to me as a great source of reliable, good, modern, interesting publications. And also, uh, being from Massachusetts, the Paulists have uh, one of the best spots in the city for the Paulist Center. And that was a great place. My cousin and I used to go there sometimes for a weekday mass or a Sunday night mass. Marymount has been closely affiliated with the Paulists for 30 or 40 years. They have been essential spiritual guides for our student body because they are the people who come to say the school masses and they've done that for all of the years that I can remember. Speaking to the students uh, always with the, the sense of the diversity of the community to which we all belong. We're Ignatian. Our life is based very much on, on the Gospel and on, on the message of Jesus, like, like the Jesuits. But I find when we go to the English Mass and we get um, a homily that's always well prepared, that it, it breaks the Word of God for us. So it, it opens up. We Very often we find we come back and um, we'll talk about it on our way home or we'll reflect on it again um, before our evening meal. Um, but we always get something that's enriching. I think it's an important service for, for the religious in, in Rome because many of us are international. It's very difficult coming in to live in Rome as an expat to enter into the, the Roman and the Italian way of liturgy and, and church. So um, there's, there's something familiar for us in the service that you offer and I think that's very important. Johnny and I met each other because I met an American who used to come to the church, who was not a Catholic, but she used to come to the church because it was a community. And she was dating an Italian man, and she, they introduced us. They split up, but we're together 50 years later. <laughs> We've celebrated our 50th anniversary this year. We've been here now a number of years, and it's, it feels like home. It feels like the right place to be. Santa Susanna is, is like a memory, a nice memory, but it's a memory. And this is now our new location. And uh, with the help of the Paulus, we're, we're carrying on and making, making it as beautiful as Santa Susanna was, but in a different way. 
I believe that uh, your mission is strong and not just for people of Ameri American origin, but uh, for the entire international community or English-speaking international community living in Rome. And uh, since I belong to the diplomatic community, I can say it's always very important since the greatest part of the diplomatic community speaks English and our children have been raised mostly in the international schools. I think it's really important for the families, like for the Catholic families, to have opportunity to continue with the sacraments because it's not easy to be a part of a parish to feel like you're like at home. I've been in Rome 40 plus years, 40 of which have been a member of the Paulus community here, of course, for Santa Susanna for, for decades and, and now St. Patrick. The first time I ever got to know Paulus Fathers was when I found out about Santa Susanna's in Rome, and that was interesting because a woman I knew who worked at the Vatican for many, many years, we met downtown in Rome one day, and Marjorie said to me, she said, Joan, I, um, I've never seen you at St. Susanna, Santa Susanna, and I said, what's that? <laughs> and she said, oh my gosh, that's the parish for, um, you know, Catholic Americans, English-speaking people, run by the Paulist Fathers. Well, guess where I went the next Sunday. I worked for many years at the Vatican, at the press office, the Vatican Information Service traveled a lot when I was at the Vatican. As you know, over the last year, there have been some high-level visitors to St. Patrick's. There was Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, uh, President and Mrs. Biden, and I think their presence at St. Patrick's uh, is a testament to the fact that they felt they were in a, a, a known and a safe and a trusted environment, and that's due to the Paulists, the reputation of the Paulists, the work that the Paulists have done here in Rome for a hundred years. And I think uh, they and others who have come to St. Patrick's have been very grateful for that. We have seen from the very beginning in the Paulist Fathers, people who reach out to all of these children and indeed to all of our faculty and staff, regardless of their point of origin or their place of faith, to ensure that they have what they need to develop a personal relationship with God. One of the things that keeps me most engaged with the parish and with the Paulus is their, I see it a little bit as the identity of St. Paul that they're, they're named after. St. Paul, just he didn't just go around preaching all by himself. He often encountered and worked with local collaborators and people and lay people. And I see the, the Paulists continuing in this mission of helping involve lay people in the life of the parish. The pandemic was something which really and still has an impact on the community in general. If I had to choose among all of the nice experience that we really have, and we are really, really appreciate everything, is the Zoom, lockdown Zoom masses. I think that this was, for me, extraordinary. I know that the Paulists are celebrating a hundred years of service to the American community in Rome, and that's incredible. the polis for 100 years, that, that's a massive amount of time, all the things that have happened in 100 years, that they have been in Rome all that time. I wasn't here 100 years ago, but I have been here more than 50 years. We really hope that the policy can continue to, to stay here, uh, hopefully to increase the the attendance from the people after the pandemic, you know. So if you've been here a hundred years, it's going to be a hundred more. I mean, I'm sure that that's the wish for all of us. My greatest hope is that the Paulists continue 
to, to serve in Rome. It's a very difficult mission, especially as they celebrate 100 years, to be an American parish in Rome. I really feel I belong here. I feel part of this community. 100 years from now, my grandchildren might be here. You have to hope that the home is going to be here for a lot of years, forever, as we say often in the church. 200, 300, forever. Yes, <laughs> <laughs>